I know the title and the thumbnail of this video sounds incredibly clickbait, but for those of you wondering if I'm serious or not, yeah. This build makes you invincible. For those of you wondering how this is even possible, this is all done through the power of the brand new deflecting hard tier that was of course introduced in the DLC. But not only will it allow you to basically become invincible, it will actually increase your damage output and with the right weapons and build around this deflecting hard tier, you will be able to break the hardest bosses in literal seconds. Of course, this video is going to show you how you can do that for yourself, so definitely sit back and relax, and if you happen to enjoy any part of this video, do be sure to hit that like button and make sure that you subscribe for even more juicy builds like this. But obviously with that all out of the way, let me show you how you set this bad boy up. Now firstly, I should of course show you how you even get this deflecting hard tier, and as I mentioned in the intro, it was introduced in the DLC, and luckily for us, we don't have to go too far because all you simply need to do is defeat the first like fire furnace boss that you meet in the beginning area of the DLC but the gimmick with this boss is they work very similar to the golems in the base game where in order to deal the most damage against them you do need to tick away at their feet to get them to stagger and fall down where you can then hit them with a riposte right in their face and after you rinse and repeat that method a couple of times and defeat that said fire furnace you will then be granted with the deflecting hard tier and essentially from this point on you're good to go. That is because as long as you put this hard tier in your wonder physic, when you drink said wonder physic, you will then have five minutes of this hard tier being active, which essentially turns Elden Ring into Sekiro, as with every successful spontaneous block, so basically blocking your enemy's attack at the moment it's going to hit you, you will not take any damage, nor will you take any stamina damage, and the perfect block will also charge up your retaliation attack you can do, and this attack can be charged up to four times. Essentially, with each charge you'll be doing anywhere between 20 and 80% extra base damage with said weapon you're using, and you'll also be doing an extra amount of stance damage, and that's between 10 and 40% extra stance damage. So essentially, if you perfect guard four attacks in a row before unleashing your retaliation, you can be doing 80% extra base damage along with 40% extra stance damage, and if you pair those numbers with a correct build and the correct weapon, you can deal thousands and and thousands of damage against your enemies, as well as breaking their stance in about two or three hits, making Elden Ring an absolute breeze. And of course, you're seeing a bunch of examples of me using different weapons and even shields in the gameplay in the background. And just to be clear, the gameplay is from New Game Plus 4, so the damage I'm doing is probably not going to be as much as what you will be doing in your first couple of New Game Pluses or just the base New Game. And of course, if you're in your later New Game Pluses, then just be aware you might be doing a little bit less. But I will show you the stats for the build and the weapons that I was using, but I firstly want to show you an opportunity to save you a whole bunch of money. That is because today's video is sponsored, and it's sponsored by none other than Instant Gaming. Of course, for the regulars of the channel, you'll know exactly who Instant Gaming are, but for those of you that don't, they are one of the leading providers of CD keys for the most recent games and DLC packages. And as I mentioned a moment ago, they're going to be able to possibly save you a lot of money because they obtain their CD keys keys and digital codes from the respective publishers of whatever game you're looking to purchase, meaning that they don't have to pay shipping fees, meaning you don't have to pay shipping fees, which is why everything is very, very well priced. As I mentioned there, everything is genuine and from the respective publishers, so not only are they possibly saving you a load of money, but they're extremely reliable and the process of getting these codes is extremely fast as well. So if this is sounding like an opportunity you want to take up, feel free to use the link that is down in my description as that will take you straight over to Instant Gaming. And again, just to be abundantly clear, if you do happen to purchase anything after using my link, you will be financially helping the channel. So thanks again to Instant Gaming for sponsoring our channel in today's video. But talking of said video, let me show you the stats and the weapons and everything involved so that you can get back and destroy all of the major bosses. As much as you can use the deflecting heart here with literally any weapon and any build, there are still ways to optimize it. And the way that I went about doing 
doing so is delving pretty much everything I could into strength because where the deflecting hard tier increases your physical damage as well as your stance damage by starting off with a colossal weapon or a greatsword that naturally has good attributes in both of those areas you will obviously just buff those weapons even more with the deflecting hard tier and I highly recommend that you use a high scaling strength weapon that you can change the ash of war on that is because you can use ashes of wars like the royals knight resolve or even the crag blade to again boost your overall damage output obviously specifically with royals knight resolve that will buff it by 80 percent for your next attack but obviously with that you need to prep it every time you go to an attack an enemy so i also highly recommend running crag blade because that will just naturally give you a plus 15 percent boost to your overall damage output as well as giving you a plus 10 percent boost to your stance damage which again just applies on top of the deflecting hard tier and whatever natural output the weapon was doing in the first place. Of course you're going to see me using weapons in the background but I'm just going to throw up a few examples here on screen. Again there's many many other weapons that you can use but essentially try and delve into some of the more unique greatswords or colossal weapons that the game has to offer because when you do apply either Cragblade or Royal's Knight Resolve to any of these weapons you can also change it into a heavy variant which will either give you an A or S rated scaling with that weapon depending on again the original scaling values and then once you've applied the Ash of War and changed the variant to a heavy affinity we can then apply these stats to get the best results and as always with these builds it's a level 150 character so we've got 50 points into vigor 11 mind 23 endurance 80 strength 15 dexterity 9 intelligence 33 faith and 8 arcane and again my starting class was a samurai class but you can use any starting character you want because essentially we're just pumping everything that we can into strength for giving us a good amount of health and of course a good amount of endurance just so then we can and keep swinging at our enemies after using the retaliation attack but the reason why we've got 33 faith in this build is so that we can run both howl of shibiri and the golden vow to give us the plus 25 percent extra damage boost as well as the plus 15 percent damage boost with those respective spells and as i say no matter what kind of strength based weapon you want to be using just with either one of those ash of wars i mentioned earlier along with these stats and the buffs from the deflective hard tier you're gonna be doing thousands of damage just simply with those but of course we can increase the damage even more by running these talismans so again where i was personally delving into colossal weapons and most of them can be two-handed i highly recommend running the two-handed sword talisman as you will just constantly have a plus 15 buff to your overall damage output as long as you're two-handing the weapon but where we're also dealing a lot of damage with our guard counters the curse sword talisman will be giving you a plus 20 percent boost to that retaliation attack and then i also highly recommend that you have one of the turtle talismans whether that's the two-headed turtle talisman or the regular turtle talisman to increase your stamina recovery speed because of course although this build can make you invincible it does require perfect timing every single time you deflect it and if you deflect a little bit early depending on the guard boost of your weapon you will take some stamina damage so again you've probably seen sometimes in certain fights especially against melania and trying to deflect her waterfowl my stamina does go down a little bit if i mistime any of those attacks so just to ensure that i've got some form of stamina after doing the retaliation attack or doing a charged heavy i do of course recommend running this talisman and then again for any colossal weapons or great swords or anything of that nature i recommend for your final talisman that you have some like the axe talisman just so then you're not relying on the guard counters to obviously deal the high amount of damage but if you are using something like a great spear or anything that does a thrusting move i highly recommend changing out the axe talisman for the spear talisman as whenever you hit your enemy with a counter attack with a thrusting weapon you will do a plus 15 percent extra damage which is more often than not going to happen if you are using the deflecting counter attacks and of course if you want to practice using this hard tier feel free to use something like a dragon crest great shield just to allow you to survive a little bit more until you get the timings down with certain boss fights but essentially with that collection of talismans i've just shown you paired with some of the colossal weapons in the game that is how you're going to be doing the damage that i'm showing you on screen and of course we've got another slot in our wonder physic but i'll be completely honest it's entirely down to your guys's playstyle, which will determine what you want to put in there of course if you want the absolute best damage output you can 
can indeed run something like the Strength Knot tier to again boost your AR as much as possible. But of course, we're into our final soft cap, so it's not going to boost it by a huge amount. So you could potentially run something like the Upper Line Hard tier to again help with your overall defense. Or if you really wanted to, you can even add the Stone Barb Crack tier in there because if the stance damage wasn't enough already, you can improve that again by another 30%, which again, with most colossal weapons and against certain bosses, you'll be breaking their poises in one or two full hits of a fully charged deflecting hard tier attack. And uh, yeah, I know I have shown you a bunch of different weapons that you can use, but realistically, you can use any strength or any other weapon in the game that you want because the deflecting hard tier is all about timing. So if you wanted to mimic Sekiro even further and use one of the katanas in the game or even something like a pole blade, you can of course focus then on DPS damage as well as having the deflecting hard tier in here and basically put everything that you had into strength into dexterity instead. But as I say, as long as you've got the deflecting hard tier in your wonder physic and as long as you can get the timings down, you are essentially invincible to most attacks. Basically anything that isn't a grab attack or like an environmental attack can be blocked and the more that you block the more powerful you become and the more that you use this hard tier the more you'll get used to blocking everything meaning that with enough practice you can essentially complete Elden Ring without a scratch and just like that that is how you can become invincible in Elden Ring I know I've said it a couple of times already throughout this video but of course it does rely on your skill but I'll be completely honest I'm not the best at Sekiro nor am I the best at Elden Ring but I was still managing and getting a load of perfect guards off so essentially if I can do it, I'm sure you guys can do it too. But if you do want to make this even easier for yourself, you can also use some of the new frosting shields that were introduced in the DLC, as they will have some of the best guard boosts, meaning that if you do use your guard a little bit too early, you won't have too much stamina damage taken, meaning that you can essentially sit there and spam your LB or L1 button to ensure that you basically always <laughs> hit a perfect guard. So if you are trying to use this build with some of your favorite weapons, definitely try it with a shield first just so that you can get the timings down and then when you feel a little bit more comfortable that's when you can then start going into your favorite weapons and deal the silly amounts of damage that you saw me doing but I have pretty much said everything I need to say about this build if you guys have any ways of making this any better then feel free to let me know in the comments what you would do to improve this build but if this video helped you out in any way, obviously do leave a like rating down below. It genuinely helps out the channel so much and it also lets me know that you want to see more builds like this in the future. But of course, other than reminding you to subscribe down below too, I have done enough yapping <laughs> for this particular video. So I'm going to let you guys go now. Obviously, have fun with this build. Let me know how you get on and I guess I'll catch you in the next video of whatever it is that we make. Bye bye.